you wrote this weekend that you're sure that Britain is not a corrupt country. Um, I'm not sure everybody would agree with that. Well, it seems to be a very wide definition of corruption in some people's minds. They use the word very loosely uh, because they don't like some particular uh, politician or, or, or form of politics. That's another question. I wasn't defending the political parties or the government or, or Al Johnson or anybody when I said this. I just think people should be careful how they use language. I lived in a corrupt country, the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. Yeah. I had to bribe people simply to, to continue my daily life. And I have to tell you, it's completely different from anything I've experienced here. If you had, for instance, always to carry a £20 note on you in case you were stopped by the traffic cops and had to bribe them, uh, then you'd know the difference. Mm. If, you, if you had to bribe council officials uh, to get your, get your garbage taken away or bribe your dentist to have anaesthetic, uh, then you'd know the difference or bribe your teacher to make sure your child got good marks in school. That was what went on in the Soviet Union. It doesn't go on here, and it's ridiculous to pretend that, uh, that we've reached that stage. Mm. Uh, we should value what we have. You don't value what, it, what you have. You don't protect it. And it's the, the, I just think people use the word too loosely. And most of the responses are going, well, you say it's not corrupt, but look at this, that, and the other. I say, of course, I understand all these things are bad about the country, but to use the term corruption is just wrong. Uh, we, we simply don't have this. Look at the, the, the re recent revelations about the Afghan army, which mm. didn't exist. Yes. Because all the generals have simply trousered the money they've been given to pay the wages of the soldiers. The reason why the Afghan army didn't stand up for the Taliban was there wasn't an Afghan right. army. That was a very uh, interesting. I, th I thought that that's corruption. Yeah, we, we don't have that. Here. I thought that, that was, was a, a, I thought that was a fascinating insight actually in, in, into what uh, what happened in Afghanistan. But I do seem to remember, and you may remember this as well, back in uh, the pre kind of BT uh, British Telecom days, you could, if you knew somebody, find uh, a friendly. A member of the GPO to put a telephone line in your house because otherwise you'd have to wait about two months for it. Well, I do remember the influence existed. That was quite different. When I came to London to, to work on a Fleet Street newspaper, I remember I, I, I uh, managing editor certainly would have had a word with uh, with the GPO to, to get me, or I think British Telecom as it even was by then, yeah. it was nationalised, to get me a phone. But that was much more a case of a newspaper using its influence to get someone a, a phone because it was essential for their work. It's it, there is a, I did say that there is a, a form of corruption by friendship, mm. uh, which is very common in this country. There's, the, the people are helping each other out. Yeah. Uh, but it's is not, that not just as bad, though? Because, because then, hands, but is that, but not, that happens in any society. Yeah, but is it not just as bad, though, if you're using influence because of who you are or who you know to leapfrog over somebody else in the same way that others are paying for it? Is it how is that different? Well, there's several things. It's, first of all, it's inevitable, I'd say, in, in any society there will be networks of friendship and cooperation and backstretching which will exist. And I, I defy you to think of a way of making it impossible. Mm. Uh, but it's not the same as money changing hands uh, simply so that you can live your life in, in a normal fashion. So people get advantages. Uh, but the, the whole of the Soviet system was supposed to make everybody equal. Yeah. Uh, but the, the actual consequence of it was probably the most unequal society that ever existed with the elite living in secret luxury uh, behind 15-foot green fences in, in, in nice country dachas mm. and, uh, and driven around in limousines and everybody else slogging along, uh, bribing the dentist. Yeah. And it, that, that is, they even had, for goodness sake, the, the Central Committee of the Soviet Communist Party had their own hospital, yeah. uh, which nobody else could go to. Now, I, 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 we just don't have that. And... It's just it's, it's language inflation to go around saying that we have because because some MP has been has been doing a second job. Mm. You, you need to address these things with 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 care it, rather than just shouting yeah. and screaming corruption. So what is the problem? How do we solve it? But the, the lax use of language is absurd. I said I, I, you can most most of us have visited corrupt countries, uh, possibly without knowing it. My advantage is I lived in one. Mm. And when you live in one, you, you have to come to terms with it. What do you do? And I'll tell you what you do. You become involved with it because life becomes impossible if you don't. Mm. And we simply don't have that here. But let's say rejoice in that and be vigilant against it coming here. But don't use the, the, the term so loosely that mm. you have nothing to say when, when the real thing happens. It's, 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 it's like screaming when you've got a cut finger. Yes. I'm un, I was listening over the weekend to Lord Heseltine uh, attempting to make out that John Major had used two words very precisely. Uh, and in his description was political um, corruption. I'm not quite sure what the difference is supposed to be. And I wasn't buying that political corruption is somehow different from corruption. I don't know what he means there. I know, obviously, if, if a country is corrupt, then politics will be involved in that in, in that corruption yeah. because what you're selling is the power that you've obtained. 
No. That's what. That's what. That's how. It, the, the reason why this country is largely in corrupt is, is partly because of a Christian and Protestant tradition which placed a very high level of value on on trust, and secondly because of the the very intelligent reforms made, particularly in the civil service, uh, in the nineteenth century, uh, which which created a a governing system which was based largely upon merit. Now we've mm. done as much as we can in the last fifty years to undo that. But a lot of it still exists. Also, we, we still do have, to some extent, reasonably vigilant media uh, who can actually point out and expose corruption when it happens. And this is also weakening. And we are moving towards circumstances where we may well become a corrupt country. Uh, but we won't, we, won't, we won't protect ourselves against it by saying that we've already reached that destination.